to Pomona live for the 2010 kickoff, and we are blessed to have the 82nd Airborne Division's All-American Chorus from Fort Bragg, North Carolina. And the army goes rolling along. And then it's high, high, hey, the army's on its way. Count all the cadence on a strong. This is all American chorus. As we take a look back at some more winter nationals history, 1971, Big Daddy Don Garlitz. Rear engine top fuel drag and drag servo is the first successful one that changed the course of drag racing from this point on. And why would the All-American Chorus be here? Perhaps it's for all the accolades of the current top fuel legend. We call him the Sarge, Tony Schumacher. This action from back in 2008 when Tony Schumacher becomes a two-time Winter Nationals champion. But his numbers go way bigger beyond that. The legends are on our NHRA race day set. talking about what you've done can you believe that the winter nationals has gotten to the 50th year i don't think it would have been possible without you well you know it don't seem like it's been 50 years i think back to 1963 my gosh it seems like it was just yesterday but then time goes fast when you're having fun dave <laughs> It happens. <laughs> well, and speaking of having fun, Tony, I mean, with all your wins, all your championships, I mean, what are your goals? Now, I got to remember, I remember you starting out, you would have drove anything, you were driving jet dragsters, Absolutely. and obviously you had goals back then. I don't even think they were as high as what you've achieved already, but what are you looking for in the future? Well, you know, I'm looking forward to uh, proving that we, we weren't a fluke last year, obviously, you know, and it seems like every year we, we go on, we win a championship a different way. Uh, last year was no exception. It was it was definitely new. We had a brand new team with Mike Green and, and Neil two in the cars. And, and, you know, we were written off and, and to go to show up here at Pomona uh, and start out and, and just build off of a brand new team and go on to accomplish what we accomplished last year for the U.S. Army, for these 82nd Airborne boys and all the people that served for us, man, it was incredible. It was just it was a gift to be part of a moment like that. And I, and I think that's it. I, I'm good at recognizing that I've been pretty blessed with great teams, and, and I plan on continuing with that on for a few more years, a few more years, and then me and uh, me and Garlis will both uh, take a little break, go fishing. <laughs> hey, that's not a bad way to do it. Yeah, you know, yeah. how, how does Big Daddy Don Garlitz and the career of Tony Schumacher stand? When you look at them side by side, well, let's, let's take a look. And there's some very impressive numbers for both drivers. That's right. There weren't as many national events when Don Garlis was driving back there. So you look at the winning percentage there. Look at Big Daddy, almost 30%. Tony Schumacher, 21%. That says a lot right there. Two legends here on the set with us. Great careers for both. Don, we ask you all the time, what do you think of Tony Schumacher? What do you think of the Sarge? What, about the, what do you think of that guy as a top fuel driver? Well, he's my pick. This is, this is my boy here. <laughs> That's a good pick. Couldn't be a couldn't be a better guy taking my place. Right. But Tony, what, what did Don Garlis mean to you in your career? Because, I mean, you're a second-generation driver like I was. I looked up to him. I mean, what did uh, you see in Don as growing up as a kid? Just everything, man. It's, it's the reason we all race, you know, guys like him and uh, really him in particular. He just he created this sport and everything about it. And, uh, and it wasn't just, you know, people talk about him moving the engine to the back of the car. Well, we appreciate that, but it's just all of it. In general, it's Big Daddy Don Garland's man. He was the name of the sport. He's the guy, the guy that we recognize as one of the probably the man that built the sport the most. And uh, we appreciate it. You know, we still go back, and it's great to see all the swamp rats. It's great to come out, and I think NHRA is doing a good job bringing some of the old cars out here right now, which we have to have out here, uh, just to to remind us every now and then. You know, we were talking last night at that Legends at Legends dinner, and, and they were saying how the drivers are, you know, more scripted, and we read off the the teleprompters now. And, and yes, it's more business, but we got to remember what it was like because we have to get back with those huge moments when it's bottom of the ninth base is loaded we got to remember what it's like to just well, love you, racing you know any entity that forgets its history has no future it's right. a great and so point. i like Absolutely. to see nhra remembering its history because that means it's going to have a future well, one guy that certainly remembers that history and appreciates it and will compete with that man for the top field championship again this year is larry dixon he's standing by right now with gary 
You talk about the grand history of the 49 previous years in the Winter Nationals. Consider that Larry Dixon, his dad, both are former winners of this great event. You know the stats that relate to Larry. Two championships, just missed another one by two points last year. 48 career wins. Number two qualifier by a thousandth of a second this weekend. But you've got a year under your belt with the Alanabi team. How much more comfortable, confident do you feel starting this year as opposed to a year ago at this time? Oh, it's uh, it's night and day, I'm literally, uh, how much difference a, a year. Just with the guys driving this style of race car, you know, Brad Hadman uh, builds a great car, but it just took me a while to uh, learn how to drive it. And, and obviously, uh, you know, with Alan Johnson, Jason McCullough, everybody on the Alan Abbey team, they, uh, they don't they don't have soft tune-ups for you <laughs> to get any learning time so it's uh, you're kind of trial by fire and get out there and do it but coming in this uh, this uh, this week I was ready for this season to start the Monday after the finals so um, you know I'm, I'm really looking forward to the day and uh, we'll see if we can uh, get number 49 at the 50th mm -hmm. he incidentally a year ago did not qualify for this race so he's already way ahead of the curve he certainly is. Once again, guys, how about it for the 82nd Airborne Division All-American Chorus? When we come back, we'll have more with Big Daddy Don Garlitz and Tony Schumacher's NHRA Today Live rolls on from Pomona. Don, let's go to the Fram email question. Why did you decide to drive a rear-engine dragster? Dale, North Carolina, wants to know. Well, I had that terrible accident, you know, at Long Beach in uh, March of 1970. Blew off part of my right foot. And I just wasn't ready to retire. And, and so many of my friends had been killed in the previous couple of years in the slingshot dragsters sitting in the back behind the engine and on, over the drivetrain. You got to remember those days, the drivetrains were all just automobile parts. They weren't the special parts they have like today in the funny cars. And I had seen the rear engine cars at Indianapolis maneuvering in traffic at 200 miles an hour. And I said, why can't we get down a straight line safely for 1,320 feet, yeah. and that began the quest on. Tony, I'm glad. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're glad that he made that change for you. What do you expect today? Well, I think we're going to have a great race today, and I think uh, some of the guys are going to get caught off guard. It's going to be 80 degrees, a little bit warmer, and uh, I think we're going to be real happy that we went out to, to Florida and did a lot of testing because, uh, you know, it's a battle, man. There's no easy car. It's, no, it, it, it's a different world right now, man. These are the baddest cars in the world, 16 guys showing up to race. Who's ready for race day? Yeah!